Well, welcome back to McLean's Television here. I'm delighted to say one of our regulars is with us here again, Liam Beckett, as we look ahead to what I think is going to be a very exciting and a very open Irish League Premiership campaign, Liam. Couldn't agree more, Adrian. I thought this time last year I couldn't see past Linfield. David Jeffrey hadn't won the title the, the, the season before that, and I thought he needs to win it, so I tipped Linfield, and of course I was wrong. Uh, Cliftonville became, once again, after a slow start, the team of the season, and now for the past two seasons they've been the best team in Irish League football. And I see no reason why I would go past them again this year, because there's been massive changes at Linfield, as we know. But I still think, even despite the loss of Liam Boyce, who was Cliftonville's Roy of the Rovers, I think despite the loss of Liam Boyce, uh, they have just since signed David McDaid from Coleraine, who I rate very highly. Uh, so I can't see past Cliftonville. They needed McDaid too, didn't they? Because, uh, you know, Boyce brought a certain... Um, there was a certain level of play and a certain standard where the ball went up front and it stuck up front for him to try and uh, create things. He could also score. He would bring in Joe Gormley and uh, they were a, a lethal partnership. Uh, they needed McDaid to ensure that they can continue at the high level they're at? Yes, I think they were the perfect combination. As I said many times, they were like spuds and butter, you know, great pairing, uh, both of them. Uh, and, and Boyce played more of a link man role, I, th I thought, with Joe Gormley. Uh, I watched their game on Saturday, I was working at it on Saturday, uh, and Cliftonville, no. They tried young Stephen Garrett, who's an outstanding wide right player, or wide left player but he's not a striker. And they played him in a role which I thought was foreign to him. Obviously, Tommy Breslin, the manager, thought, we'll see how it goes. I think Tommy quickly realised, no, you need a goal. Goal scorers are born, Adrian. They're not created, they're not coached. You can't get goal scoring instinct or technique out of a coaching manual. The man above gives you that instinct. And uh, you either have it when you're born or you don't. You can certainly help to develop it. Uh, David McDaid has got it. I think it'll be perfect for Joe Gormley. They play a lovely slick band of, uh, brand of passing football, as we know. That was missing on Saturday. We only saw brief glimpses of what they're good at. And to be honest, uh, it'll be another slow start for them because it's going to take a wee bit of time for McDaid to settle in. But having said all that, I still think that uh, they're the team to beat. Interesting in your column in the, the newsletter, you talked about Linfield and you used the word which stuck out for me uh, for the fans. Patience. Patience with the new man, young Feeney in. David Jeffrey, a legend away now. You know I mean? It is going to take time for him to find his feet and for the players to find the way he wants them to play. Very much so. It's not only a matter of a managerial change, Adrian. There, there's a coaching change as well. Uh, Brian McLaughlin, David's right-hand man, decided to leave along with David Jeffrey. Uh, Warren Feeney, the new young uh, manager at Linfield, has brought in his own coach. Uh, half the team have gone for various reasons. A new team has been assembled. And then if you compound all that with a new stadium being created at Windsor Park, complete refurbishment, having to play their first games away from home, uh, that's all very unsettling. And that's why I said, yes, the nucleus is there of perhaps a great Linfield team being built once again, but it won't be done overnight, Adrian. And that's why I've appealed to the Linfield fans and the Linfield faithful, be patient. Young Warren will stumble, make no mistake about that. And when he stumbles, he won't need criticism. He'll need help and he'll need support. And it's important that they be patient and look to the future, look at the big picture. Uh, you don't employ a dog and bark yourself. You've got to employ the lad, he's there now, give him his time. Let him make the major decisions and stand by him. Were you surprised at some of the, the players who did depart uh, Windsor Park? Some of the, you know, the, uh, the legends of the game, yeah. the veterans, and they've gone to other teams, and the other teams now look very strong because of that. Yes, none other than Porter Down. You know, they snapped up Michael Galt, they snapped up uh, Mark McAllister, and also Robert Garrett. Ribs, as he's known, because you can see them quite plainly when he takes the shirt off, but he's a wee terrier. And funny, I was surprised by some who went through the exit door. And also Philip Larry, who I always rate it outstanding. But I know the reasons Philip left. He went for uh, his job. He's a pharmaceutical chemist. Uh, he's, he's got his own business now in Limavady. Offered the chance to join Derry City, just a few miles up the road for training. Uh, very handy for him. So I can see the reasons through that. But there'll be various reasons why that, that team has changed so much. Uh, Warren has brought in players that I don't know, 
uh, obviously some young lads from England and so on have never heard tell of them. Uh, they may well become Linfield stars of the future, but I think what has been Linfield's loss has most certainly been Portadown's gain again. Gain. <laughs> Portadown, Portadown <laughs> are, are th a, a third favourites after the obvious two, which is a Cliftonville, Linfield, and you know when you look at the at the Mid Ulster, as I would call it, you know Portadown, Glenavon, Glenavon, great attack, porous enough defence. But uh, if you assess both those teams, not bad outfits, you know. Not bad. Uh, I like Portadown. I think they've got a great spine. Last year, Portadown had a good defence. Probably the most prolific forward line in Irish League football, Adrian. And the Twigs and the, and the Murrays. And they had Braniff at the start. He's gone now, but they've, they've now brought McAllister in. Uh, I think they have a fabulous looking squad. And I think they're the team that I'm looking at as dark horses to, to rattle Cliftonville's cage this year. I think they've got it all. They were weak in midfield last year, Porter Down. That was their big weakness. They had no uh, tenacity in midfield. They've signed Michael Galt and, and Robert Garrett. They'll give you tenacity, and I think they're now the, the complete unit. And when I look at Saturday's results and see that they had five main players missing, not fringe players, main players missing, and they still comprehensively defeat Linfield 3-0, when you take that into account, that's no mean result. You know, people will be pointing the finger at a weak Linfield, a dishevelled Linfield, a disjointed Linfield. That's taken some of the credit away from Portadown and Ronnie McFall. I think I rate them so highly. Glenavon, as you've mentioned, great. Uh, what a forward line they have. Mm. And what a midfield. I like wee McCabe. There's a wee thing. There's a wee edge to him. He'll hit you a wee kick. And then when you would look at him, he'd ask you what you're looking at. <laughs> uh, I like him for that, Adrian. But I think they're a wee bit vulnerable defensively. I think they lack a wee bit of pace defensively. And they need to get that sorted. No point scoring four, Adrian, if you're going to concede five. Well, now I'll move on then into uh, what I would call two of the city teams, Crusaders and Glentorn. The crews I like, they're always there, thereabouts, uh, Stephen Baxter. But to have the squad, you know, they're there, thereabouts, they're, 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 already people are saying they're a good cup side, yeah. a wee bit like Glen Torn. Yeah. Do they have the strength and depth to, to last the pace of a marathon? It's not a sprint, as you know, the Premiership. No, I think they have. They've made some good acquisitions in the summer. They brought in Billy Joe Burns, one, another Linfield uh, player who left. I like uh, Billy Joe. I think he's a good right back. I think that's a good addition to the team. And I think they can they can rotate Paul Lehman and David McGowan in central uh, defence. They've got Coates, the captain Marvel. Uh, good defensively, good steady goalie, Sean O'Neill. They've got a decent midfield. I like the midfield. Chris Morrow, young Cadell and them in there. I like them. And then they've got a good uh, goal-scoring forward line. And probably the best left winger in the Irish League football in Paul Heatley. No, they have a good side, Adrian, and they'll not be too far away. They need consistency. They were very inconsistent last year, Crusaders. Capable of winning every week, but it's doing it, uh, saying it and doing it are two different things. And Glen Torn. I didn't hold a lot of hope for Glen Torn this season. Uh, they have been in decline and free fall for the last number of seasons for reasons that are well now chronicled, and, and we know that. But there comes a time when you've got to bottom out and start rebuilding for the future. I think that stage has been reached and I was so impressed by Glen Torn on Saturday at Solitude. I thought they were excellent. Some really talented young players, young Addis at the back, young Garrett at the back, uh, midfielded a big lad, Kim Nelson. Big young lad, a lot of presence, can play. I liked Fra McCaffrey. Uh, I was very impressed by Glen Torn. A young team, bright, uh, enthusiastic. And again, the Glen Torn faithful need to be patient. They're now building a new team there. They're probably, I hope, doing it within their means. Uh, and, and I think that Glen Torn can look for a bright future. I think there'll be top six. And I think of the teams that we have spoken about already, that's my top six. Now, uh, I'm going to move up then towards uh, your neck of the woods up to the northwest. I look at uh, Korea and Balamina now. What do you think of them? I think Balamina will push for a top six place. Uh, the sign of Matthew Tipton is a good sign, and I like Matt, I rate him. And young uh, Kyle McVeigh, they've just acquired recently, a former Korean player. As honest as the day's long, great young lad, Kyle. He'll add some stability to their defence. Yes, I like them. They'll push the likes of Glen Torn and Glenavon and so on for a top six slot. Korean, former club of mine, going through a transitional period. Uh, I worry about them, Adrian. I think they lack a presence in midfield. They lack a wee McCabe. 
Uh, I think that the, 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 the decision for McDade to go to Cliftonville will hurt them dearly. It leaves them one recognised striker now in Gary Brown, who hasn't really caught it down there. Uh, defensively, just OK. I worry about Coleraine, to be honest. I hope I'm wrong, but I think that they'll be in the bottom six and, and they need to just... I think they've enough of quality to stay clear of the bottom relegation zone, but not much more. I hope I'm wrong, but I worry about them. I'm going to move on then now to uh, Dungallon and Balna Mallard, who are rated in the bottom four when it comes to the odds from McLean's for the for the Irish League. I don't think realistically Dungannon and Swifts are going to win the Irish League nor Balna Mallard, but how do you rate them? Uh, I, I, I always run out of superlatives for Dungannon because I think they've got a small fan base. Uh, a bit like Balna Mallard, to be honest. But they play football the proper way. They run their club the proper way. If they can afford to give a player a tenner, that's what it is. They don't give them £12. They give them what they can afford. Uh, and they run a tight ship. The McAree's and the Murphys down there deserve tremendous credit. I have nothing but admiration for them. If you go in a, for a cup of tea or you go to the toilet in Dungannon, it's spotless. Uh, you'll always be offered a cup of tea. To me, I love going to Dungannon. Speak for yourself, Liam. You I love, I'm a local, yes. I, I, love, <laughs> I, love going, I love going there, Adrian. They treat me well and they're great football people. And I think the fact that every season they guarantee the people of Dungannon senior football it's 12 years now. It's been an incredible Well, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, and I take my hat off to them. Not my hair, my hat. And, and I think they're fantastic. Balna Mallard, likewise. Probably the best playing surface in Irish League football at Balna Mallard. Without doubt, the best swoosh roll. They have <laughs> slices of swoosh roll that's like a tyre of a lawnmower. <laughs> fantastic, Adrian. And they're great, great people at Balna Mallard. Again, you're only down the kettle zone. Isn't that what it's all about? It's a sport at the end of the day. You're right, they won't win the league. But they'll give the Cups a, a run and, and they'll give everybody good value for money and they'll cause the odd upset along the way. And I sincerely hope for the good of our game that Dungannon and Balna Mallard are here to stay. Uh, Warren Point and Institute, of course you know all about Institute. Warren Point, I felt they played some wonderful football last season and thoroughly deserved it. In the end, they were 10, 12 points better than ours at, at the, uh, the race to the bottom, I suppose, you know. So how would you uh, how would you assess their season? Warren Point, uh, I I always you sing their praises from the high heavens. You, you, you're you're a big fan of Warren Point. You like the way they play football. I admire them as well. They're down in that lower end of the league. They're down for a reason because they as well don't have a big budget to work with. Uh, most of their players are not household names, uh, and I mean that with the greatest of respect. And they play as a unit. Uh, I would say their earnings are very, very little, the players who play for Warren Point. Again, what a tremendous credit that they can come up and, 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 and eventually reach the pinnacle and the very highest tier of local football, the Premiership, and come up and stay up. Now, they came up last year, struggled, but they were away from home a lot because their own ground had to be brought up. It didn't meet the criteria. They're back at home now, and I think they'll stay up this year, and that's why I think they'll put pressure on the likes of Coleraine and possibly Balna Mallard, you know, for who'll be down there in that dogfight at the end of the season. Institute, do you think they'll be, uh, you know, that they're listed at some ridiculous price here in McLean's as a 200 or 250 to 1 to win the Irish League. They're not going to win the Irish League, so, you know, what do you think about Institute's chances? Uh, my heart would say I want them to do well. My head would tell me differently. Uh, great people up there. Again, you'll not be long up there until the kettle's on. Uh, I know the board, I know how hard they work, great ladies committee, and do you know this Adrian, they have facilities that deserve to be in Premier League football, they would put some of the other facilities to shame, but they don't have a big know, but fan deserving base. deserving it and earning exactly. it. Exactly. Now Stephen O'Flynn, uh, I watched them against on Gannon in, in their opening league, uh, league game, now he is a striker. Yeah, and I think that's, that's, their, that's their golden nugget, uh, Stephen O'Flynn. I tried to sign him myself when I was manager of Institute, but he was at Derry City and possibly going to Galway United. Uh, but I think Galway were giving him more for his phone bill expenses than I was going to be able to offer him to play. <laughs> and he was quite honest and told me that. I met him in a Derry hotel up there, and he, when he told, when I offered him what, what I had to offer him, he says, Liam, I don't want to be disrespectful to you, but I'm getting more than that for my mobile phone bill from Galway United. So that was the end of the story. Found him a lovely, lovely lad. He's big, he has a presence, 
He'll score goals, mm. but then he'll now be a target for other teams, i.e. the likes of Coleraine. Some of those teams will now be saying, listen, you know, we need somebody up front. O'Flynn has a presence. They'll score you goals as well. Uh, they'll struggle, Adrian. I think that initial uh, adrenaline that pumps when you get to the Premiership and it's, it's there for the first few games, they need to, they'll play a nice brand of football. Their manager, Paul Key, likes to get it down and pass it. Uh, they've some they've some outstanding players like Paddy McLaughlin at the back, who was my captain Marvel when I was up there. I can tell you a few stories Touch about Paddy. Him, is but he a bit of a hard nut too. Like he's a tough guy, Paddy, not taking <laughs> any prisoners. Yeah, yeah it, and and but I like him. Uh, he's a great lad, uh, uh, and and they have those type of players. And perhaps Paddy's on the downward side of his career now, and 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 he'll. He'll enjoy it and he'll relish the challenge, but he could be found wanting sometimes, as some of them could be in terms of pace. Uh, and that goes with age, obviously. Uh, and it's, it's no shame on them. But I think that Institute will do well to survive, Adrian. I think they're going to get involved at the end of the season in a relegation battle. It hurts me to say that because I know how hard they've worked to get here. But you're quite right. Uh, deserving it, earning it, you've got to do that on the park. The points will tell the tale at the end of the season. I think that I think they'll struggle, Adrian. So, final paragraph. Then you think an institute of the team that might go down again uh, to the championship, and your winners again, Cliftonville. My winners again are Cliftonville. If McDade can slot in quickly there with Joe Gormley, uh, I think that great combination. They they've retained the the bulk of last year's squad. That continuity is still there in defence. That continuity is still there in midfield. Uh, and the only loss was our lawyer, the Rovers character up front in uh, Liam Boyce. He's been replaced by David McDade, I think. Cliftonville for me. I think they hold all the aces. Isn't the league, Adrian, very like a pack of cards and it's shuffled at the start of every season and you get a new hand. I think Cliffin will get most of the aces. And finally, Ballamina won the cup last year. Uh, who do you see this year maybe as a cup threat? Portadown or Glenavon. I think it'll either be Portadown or Glenavon. I think Glenavon won the, the, the cup last Sorry, year. Sorry, yes, they won it last year. They won the cup last year, and I think uh, Portadown of them, possibly Crusaders as well, good cup teams, great cup tradition. I think you need a tradition to, 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 to do well in the cup as well. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be there or thereabouts. If we're looking for outsiders, Portadown, outsiders in the league, and we'll have a say in all the cup competitions, as will Glenavon and as will Crusaders. I'm really excited, Adrian, bring it on. Good morning, thank you very much indeed for joining us. McLean's, thank you.